Hello everybody, welcome to the Elder Scrolls Online public test server. This is version 5.1.0, week 1 of update 23. And uh, I know that this, uh, the patch notes dropped early and there's been plenty of time to discuss, debate, and cry about them. Uh, but I wanted to just uh, go over some of the highlights. Uh, I'm, I'm not too concerned yet with combat changes. Every DLC, every chapter comes with a combat change or balance, quote unquote. And I do know that the first week of the ETS, usually those are the roughest ones because they will change during the course of the testing period of this update. So I'm not ready to panic yet. Um, most, mostly the way I approach it is we'll try it out, see how it feels, see if I need to change anything. Might have to change champion points around, I might have to change my potions, my food, or my enchantments. But usually we're able to adjust every, every time they do something. Now there are some major changes to combat, but they also did some major changes for elsewhere chapter. So I think there's a goal somewhere in here. I don't quite understand what it is, but uh, for me, as long as I can continue to complete the content on my number one character, that's fine. Now, first of all, we're going to look at the uh, the two new dungeons. Uh, I'm not going to do the dungeons. These are called the... Scrolling through patch notes here. The Moongrave Fane and the Lair of Marcelloc. Now, one of them is in Grotwood, and that is going to be the Lair of Marcelloc. And when you enter this dungeon, it's uh, right, uh, I guess you'd have to come here to the Elden Root Temple Way Shrine to get there. Once you step right inside, you will immediately collect a, a little achievement and a reward. It's a costume reward, so let's have a look at it. Uh, it is called the Dread Aurelian Mask, and try it on so this is what it looks like it it's not it, it's kind of similar to the other kind of uh, dragony mask that we pick up during our questing in elsewhere but it is different it has the helmet uh, the horns coming out the front a different kind of mask and a style um so let's apply it because I want to check out the uh, dyes on it. So, randomized dyes. So now we can see the parts that that you can dye on it. It looks like just the metal, the horns and the dragon scales will not change color. But the uh, little cloth piece underneath and the metal will. So that is pretty cool. Also, a public service announcement. If you didn't catch it in the Twitters, uh, there was earlier planned for July a release of the Jodes Embrace house with a t-shirt. And they have rescinded that it's not going to happen this month. So unfortunately, we do not get to have Jodes Embrace or the t-shirt. So... Look forward to that sometime in the future. There's something went wrong, and they have to they have to uh, they have to delay that for a little bit. Now uh, the other big changes are some changes for Moon's quality of life path. for crafters. All so they've introduced this thing called multi crafting, and it took me a little while to try to figure out what that meant because I kept looking in here, going, "Hey, I don't see anything different." Well, what it means is, um, if you can see here, we have the ability to, you know, I'm going to craft a regular bow, a little bow. But right here, it says quantity. Now, this is a new 
a new feature. Now we can add a certain number that we want, or we can just craft all of them, which would be 22. I could craft 22 maple blows. Um, so basically it allows you to craft multiple of the same item at one time, instead of having to do it, if you had to do five of these for some reason, you used to have to be able you used to have to do it one at a time now you just you can do five and it'll be instant it's actually instant so let's see go back to five and then craft there five maple bows so it's you don't have to sit there and wait for each bow to craft over and over now I have five bows. So unfortunately, they don't stack in your inventory, so you will have to keep aware of how much space you have in your inventory before you start your crafting. Now, um, same applies for the construction. So you can actually, you don't have a multiplier down here, but you can just keep adding them. You can add as many items in your inventory as you like. So you want to deconstruct multiple items. You can just pick all of these. So now I have everything ready to deconstruct. And there we go. I've got nine items to deconstruct. I get all of my items, uh, my deconstruction items in my inventory instantly. So that is a very nice feature for the uh, crafting, so what they call the multi-crafting. And next, let's go look at changes to the Undaunted. Now, um, one thing is if you have multiple characters, you would want to log every single one of them in because each one of them might know something the other one doesn't. The uh, same way that we have to do to be eligible to buy the extra sky shards from the crown store for our other characters, you will want to do that for all of your characters now because uh, we're going to be able to purchase skill lines in, in the crown store. Now there's a little controversy about this but I think it's fine. It's along the same lines as the skill, the sky shard situation. Your character has to have completed that skill line at least once. And right now it looks like we're starting off with skill lines in uh, like the guilds. And um, uh, they're also, in, I think they're gonna include the assault and support for the Alliance War if you have a character that's maxed level there. And um, Werewolf, Soul Magic, and Ledger Main. So far, that's all that they have mentioned in the patch notes. Uh, I've not seen class skills yet unlocked, but uh, that might be coming down the line. It depends, I guess, on how well uh, unlocking these other skill lines go. So I just wanted to show you that. Apparently, there's a place in the, uh, in here, there's skill lines. Now, this is your regular but buying your Curse of Vampire and Werewolf. Uh, so, I don't, I don't exactly see it in the test server yet, but it's supposedly similar to the Sky Shard situation. And unfortunately, we just don't have it on the PTS to, to see how this is going to work. We certainly will not have any costs. So I just wanted to point that out because that was in the, uh, that was in the patch notes that you were going to be able to do that. I just haven't been able to test it out. I do know that uh, when I logged in, I got a little notice that says you have skill lines available for purchase. And I'm like, okay, great. Um, but I just couldn't see them. So maybe in another patch on the PTS that'll come in and we'll talk about it later. Uh, but let, also I noticed that, um, 
we have a new currency. And this this was something look, we were all looking forward to. Uh, unfortunately, this is PTS. I do not really have 1,000 on Daunted, or 1 million on Daunted Keys. I only have six. But when you log in every character, if they had a spare um, Undaunted Key in their inventory, it now is removed from the inventory and goes into a currency system like this. So let's head over to the Undaunted area and have a look at what they have to offer. Alright, so here we are at one of the Undaunted um, encampments, and this is where we pick up our dailies. Now, if you see, we have we have the three different um, Undaunted quest givers. And uh, when you look at each one of them, you'll be able to see that they now have a store. So this is called a Pledge Master store. And uh, so Gearlon will offer things, chests, and rewards from the, the dungeons that he is in control of. So uh, now you can see that you will use your Undaunted Keys to purchase a chest. And... The, the purple chests are all five keys, and they contain one of two uh, item sets. So, as you can see in this uh, Crypt of Hearts one, you could either get the Lambrus set or the Nerineth set. It would be the uh, Part of the Lambrus set. So you get one or the other. So we cut down drastically on the RNG that we used to get from having to just go up to one of their chests and, and pray. Now you can actually pit, pick uh, which dungeon you want to get a reward from. So this is a good change in my mind. I like this a lot. There's also a mystery coffer, and it has a chance of containing ornate equipment, mercenary, motif chapters, jewelry with the harmony trait, and more. So this is this is more of the RNG stuff, and I don't think it's any of the monster helmet set pieces. Also, you can see that you get either the Grothdar shoulder style or the Lambrish shoulder style. Now with uh, Majal Ragath, you get uh, stuff from the Banished Cells, Dark Shade Caverns, Elden Hollow Coffer, Fungal Grove, Spindle Clutch, or Way Rest. And also you could purchase uh, for 50 keys, you can purchase the Shadow Rend Shoulder Style. So again, it's it's five for the purple. One for the blue and 50 for the style. Then over here is Erlog Chief Bean, and this is the DLC Dungeon Master. So he's got the Dragon Bones Coffer, Horns of the Reach, Imperial City, Scalebreaker, Shadow of the Hist, Wolf Hunter, Rastone. The style page for the Molag Kena shoulder and a mystery coffer for different uh, same rewards. It looks like each this blue one has kind of got the same uh, rewards RNG. So that I think is also a positive change that is coming to uh, update twenty three. Now, let's go over and look at the houses. There are two new houses. So let's have a look at them. Alright, we have new houses. This one is called Moon Sugar Meadow. Let's go have a look. Again, PTS, so we do not have a price. Uh, now, every time I've been here, it's been this dark, so I'm going to put on my... Put on my little um, personality with a torch. So we can see. Now, uh, 
we don't really have ma for some reason we just don't have maps on PTS so uh, it starts over here this is a um, this is actually a gate little gate but I don't I uh, you can't go there it's like an invisible wall I'm assuming we're gonna get some kind of a fence to go with this gate maybe I'm not seeing something I, I don't know but what this is is uh, apparently um, unfurnished and there's no furnished version of it so what it is is literally what it says it's a meadow it's a meadow you can swim in the water over here no problem all of this water waterfalls uh, it's just a giant meadow in Elzer it looks like we have another beach and some sand beautiful archway over there and uh, lots of night sky it's beautiful and uh, so like the one in Cold Harbor this is actually quite the blank slate so if you want to start trying to actually build structures with some of the blocks and and other things you could do that or you could make a giant uh, sculpture garden or just have a big hangout place and do dueling uh, whatever you want to do or you could have a big uh, uh, crafting area out here so it's pretty much an open open slate blank slate for you to be creative with um it, it is gorgeous i i just seem to always come here when it's dark so maybe maybe it is only dark because we're looking at the two moons right now it's gorgeous so of course we do not know the price um but it is quite large and uh, open to your interpretation I have not swum out that far but I'm certain that at some point this slaughter fish will get you it's just a beautiful open meadow so that is house number one again this is called the moon sugar meadow The next house that is new is called the Wraith Home. Let's go have a look at this. Okay, um, this house will have uh, a furnished version, an unfurnished version. And this is obviously Daedric, obviously Cold Harbor. I, I did kind of notice this little glitchy thing here. There, there's Hopefully that'll get cleaned up, but um, that's a remnant of what it looks, something that's there when it's furnished. Um, so there you go. That's that's not that's not completely it though. But you do have that one room here to the side, and then you come around the corner and. Ah, here we go. I, I got lost already. I haven't even been out the gate long. So uh, then, uh, this is what it looks like. It is quite impressive. It's like there's a magical barrier, clouds, and everything all around it. Um, there are two kind of balcony rooms, rooms and balconies over here. Um. They're both exactly the same, so there's kind of a, a room in here and a balcony you can see all the way down in there. Uh, looks like we have some azure plasm. That's not water, that's the cold harbor stuff, azure plasm. And uh, then we go up here into this portal. 
and we find ourselves up here so we can look down and look at the patterns in the floors this is, uh this is pretty amazing i do like that uh that one is the same over there pretty much yep same pretty much same design on the other side And then we can choose to go downstairs around here or over the bridge. So down here we have a little platform here. Get in the water and swim around. And you can go all the way up to the wall. There's some little nooks and things over there, but um, you can't go in there. And then you have two stairwells that go up that way, or you can come back around here and go across the bridge, which I'm going to show you right now. So you can just go across the bridge. I am absolutely in love with the floor pattern here. And then you come up to this area, like a giant cathedral, doesn't it? Part of one. And then there's a, um, a dais of some sort. You could put a throne up here and hold the court. So again, we can see the moons. This looks a lot, reminds me a lot of the Vaults of Madness. We have done that dungeon before. This is very much a Vaults of Madness style poem. And uh, let's go back here then and toggle the furnishing. Alright, now in here... I don't think, yeah, we did get furnishing here. Now you'll see why we had floating candles, because they forgot to add that one set of candles to the unfurnished, uh, take that away for the unfurnished version. And then in here we have coffins, hooks, all kinds of scary spooky stuff. And uh, back all the way to the entrance, we've got bookshelves, books, very, very nice. Over here, let's see if they put anything in these rooms. They put some tables and chairs and counters, things like that. And same over here. I'm pretty sure they don't put much up on the balcony. And we have a lot of chandeliers, very spooky chandeliers over here. And a uh, awesome table, I have one of these. Got bones in it. Very, very spooky. Some more candelabras, chairs, and a big old coffin, so I'm assuming they're expecting this to be rather a, a vampiric type of uh, home. So he just hangs out in their little coffins. And they have some rows of benches and stuff like that. So that's what the furnished looks like. There's pretty much nothing new down, down below here. So that is it for the, the two new houses. Um, so we've gone over the skill line in the crown store. It's not quite in on the PTS. But um, that's the other the other thing that I saw that was of interest to me. Um, besides tons of new sets and changes to combat. So I think that's about it for this video. It took me about, there's some unique um, mementos and things like that for the, for, the, uh, for the dungeons, unique combat pet. Also completing the dungeons gives you the next tablet for uh, Lunar Champion House, 
uh, to open up another room. So completing these two in normal mode, you don't have to go veteran, will give you the next tablet for that house. So lots of item sets to go through. We'll, we'll probably go over those a little bit later. I didn't want to take up the whole uh, video with all of the changes. These were just some of the highlights of what I found here on the PTS. And uh, we'll look at other stuff later. I hope that you have a good day and I will see you again soon. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, Oma Games. If you would like to see my live streams, please go to twitch.tv and follow Miss Oma. Take care, everybody, and I will see you next time.